it's been a while. Um, I would say I've been busy, and in a way I have been busy, but at the same time I haven't been busy. I mean, if you're a student, you know what I mean, like, you're busy, but then you're busy procrastinating, and then it's like, oh shit, I have work to do. But, um, over the past week or so, actually since about the beginning of April, um, I've been thinking a lot about death and dying and funerals. Because at the end of April in 2007, my mother died. She was diagnosed with cancer my junior year of high school, so around January or so of 2005. And she was sick, really sick. Uh, well, she was kind of okay, but not really during my junior year. She got really, really sick my senior year. And then she got pneumonia. She died from complications of mass organ failure and a bunch of bullshit. I take it more as a statement of a fact that my mom is dead than I guess as an emotional response. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but that's how it is for me, kind of. Um, like, it's not like it doesn't make me sad, but... Crying isn't going to help. And she told me when she was sick, you can't cry until I cry. And I never saw her cry. One of the few times I cried while she was sick was the night before she died. So that's been... That's been weighing heavily on my mind because it does every year. And I've also been thinking about this because of... Mumford the Dean? I think that's his name. I hope that's his name. Put a link in the description. Did a Vita the other day about death and dying and the fact that, you know, he more or less accepts death. It's the dying part that, you know, he doesn't really want to deal with. I think it's the actual dying part that most people are apprehensive about. Mom's death has also been weighing heavily on my mind because of what Megan Tonjes has been talking about in her videos for the past month, few weeks. I haven't seen yesterday's video. Today is Thursday the 12th. I haven't seen her video from the 10th. The last thing I know is what she said on Twitter, which is that she made it to the hospital. And then she put up the video and she and Gunnarola were uh, very sad about things. That's what it sounded like. So I'm, I kind of hope it's just, you know, upset from stress and seeing her grandmother, you know, in the hospital and not because of something else. Funerals and having to deal with, you know, the time after somebody dies are some of the most annoying periods of time because you're already trying to deal with the fact that, you know, someone close to you has died. With it being my mother, I was, you know, you know, I had the storm, I had to take care of shit. Well, my brother took care of more shit because I was the youngest. I was 18. My second brother is 21. My eldest brother was 23 or 24. We were children having to deal with burying our mother. It's not like we were like fully grown adult children. We were, we were all children, children. Having to deal with a funeral, we had to make the arrangements, take people in, we had to help family and friends find accommodations when they were coming in from out of town and it was seriously one of the most hellish experiences. I mean so many people being around and I kind of wanted to think and dwell and get things in order for myself but we had to you know make all the funeral arrangements. I had to tell my I had to tell my school you know I was going to be out of school for a week to take care of shit and then I had to deal with that when I got back. I had to deal with the fact that people looked at me with pity or gave me way too much sympathy. And as I'm saying this here and now, <clears throat> since I said it was the statement of a fact, I really do not want pity or sympathy. I appreciate the gesture because it's difficult to know what to tell people. But after a while, the word, well, for me, the words, I'm sorry for your loss, don't really mean anything. To end this on a nostalgic and happier note. I'm going to tell you a joke that my mom told me as a kid. So, 
there's this competition if you go into the spooky, scary old house and you stay there the entire night and you take a hundred dollar bill off this table, you get that hundred dollars and you get a thousand dollars afterwards, you know, for staying the night. So, you know, the first person, you know, this big rough guy, you know, is like, ah, testosterone, America, Arr! like one of those types. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna strut my way into this house and take this dollar. He walks in, as soon as he puts his hand near the table where the dollar is, boom, this ghost comes out and says, I'm the ghost of Abel Dable and that third dollar belongs in that table. Bitch ran away screaming like a bitch. Next night, the scientific type of cat rolls in. He's like, well, ghosts don't exist. I mean, why would they exist? I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense. What constitutes a ghost? So he walks up, you know, he goes in, looks around the house, whatever, sees a dollar, and he sees a hundred dollar bill on the table, and as soon as he reaches out to touch it, this ghost rolls out and says, I'm the ghost of Abel Dable, and that there dollar belongs to the table. Scientist runs away like a bitch. He was not ex like he knew that there was a ghost, but he was not expecting there to actually be a ghost. So he ran away like a bitch. Third person, like this slick, cool cat rolls in, kind of just walks around, chill, looks at everything. You know, kind of just takes his time. Gets to the table, kind of sidles up to it, looks at the bill, looks around, goes out and takes a dollar. And the ghost of Abel Dable comes out and says, I'm the ghost of Abel Dable and that there dollar belongs in that table. And this cat looks at him as cool as can be and says, I'm the son of Davy Crockett and this here dollar belongs in my pocket. And then he just struts his fine ass out. <laughs> okay, there was a, uh, a bit of artistic license, but uh, that's more or less a joke my mom told me when I was a kid. As you can see, it makes me smile. My mom, my mother's death. You know, it did release her from pain. It released her from the shackles of an existence that she did not want. An existence that I know she did not want because ages before she even got sick, she told me, she told us, my brothers and I, um, you know, if I'm ever in the hospital, don't keep me on life support. So when I think about my mom, I try to think about you know, the silly and ridiculous jokes she told me or the things that we did, like when I was 10 or so, we went down to St. Croix for about two weeks. We have family in St. Croix. My mother's, my maternal grandmother at, you know, in her oak, they're from St. Croix. So we went down there for the summer. That was awesome. I'd rather think about that than those last few weeks when Everything was shit. I've been reticent about filming this and I'm um, you know, probably gonna be reticent about posting this. I don't know. It's important. The thing is it is important. Patricia Ruth Hall Pinellas, you will be missed. You're loved. And I really have no idea how to end this, so.